हेलो टीम वेलकम टू माई सेशन ऑन कॉफी विद प्रब एंड टुडे वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सम कॉफी डोज ऑफ डोमेन फोर ऑफ सी सी आई सी स्क्वायर एग्जाम थैंक्स फॉर द ग्रेट रिस्पॉन्स थैंक्स फॉर द अमेजिंग रिस्पॉन्स यू हैव शेयर ऑन द डोमेन वन टू डोमेन थ्री वीडियोज एंड दैट मोटिवेट मी टू मेक अ वीडियो ऑन द डोमेन फोर इन दिस वीडियो वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम कॉफी शॉर्ट्स विच इज और विच इज कॉल्ड क्वेश्चन मैप्ड विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डोमेन फोर If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So, without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, look like a first interesting question. First coffee dose. Which layer provide services to ensure that peer application use common format to represent the data? i repeat again the question talking about which which layer provide service to ensure peer applications use a common format to represent the data so we have a option called presentation layer application layer transport layer and session layer these are the layers of the osi model we have okay now if you take example of presentation layer so suppose this is my application layer and this is basically my presentation layer and this is my session layer and this is my transport layer so whenever you open a browser and type http or anything you are actually interacting on the application layer from there there the data move to presentation layer and this presentation layer is responsible for encryption compression and presenting the format to the session layer question also talking about format so it makes sense presentation layer but let me reserve this option option b talk about application layer so user is the one which interact with the application layer and there is no formations happen on the application layer whatever the application layer receive it will pass the information to presentation now the third layer called as a transport in transport data actually divide into the segment okay segment 1 segment 2 segment 3 segment 4 so there is no formatting happen and session layer is used to establish only session so close option look like answer is a because presentation layer is responsible for presenting a data to lower layer in a form of compression and encryption and a particular format that's why the answer is a for alpha let's move to the next coffee shot thank you good question web application firewall works on which layer of the osi model see if you take again example this is my application layer this is my presentation layer this is my session layer this is my transport layer this is my network layer so if you take an example of a packet format this is basically the packet format we have so here we have a source ip source mac we have a destination mac we have a source ip we have a destination ip we have a session id and then we have a content so we have one firewall which work on the network layer but that monitor the content up to source ip destination ip okay we have a solution which monitor on the transport layer which monitor the source port and destination port but these solutions are not responsible for us to monitoring on the application layer content that's why we basically introduce the application layer firewall so what it does it basically monitor the content it actually monitor only content so question talking about application firewall works on which layer so definitely d removed because d, on the d layer we have a port addressing presentation is only responsible presentation so b removed we left with session and application session layer is responsible for establishing a session so there is no solution work on the session layer so only close option is look like a application layer so we have website here we have a user user want to access the traffic goes to the application layer firewall they basically inspect the content they inspect the ip source ip destination ip and according to that it will allow or deny the things that's why the close option is basically called as an application layer okay application layer let's move to the next question before moving to the next question okay i want to discuss most important things about this is the website okay so here we have a simple packet filtering firewall so now what happen is as a user i'm trying to access the traffic so packet filtering firewall what it check is it check the source ip it check the destination ip it check the source port it check the destination port maximum but what is the content okay what is the content that something will not be inspect by the firewall 
okay so that is why we basically introduce the web application firewall so what happened the packet is goes to this firewall this firewall is basically check source ip destination ip source for destination port and then it passed the information to web application firewall which monitor what kind of a content we have because sometimes what happened even you're adding a legitimate request you might add a mal malicious traffic in that and by which you want to bypass the firewall or bypass the exploit that's why the answer is that's why we call web application firewall works on the application layer c for charlie now let's move to the next question so question is in which kind of attack does the attacker submit a lot of connection request extremely quickly but then ignore the reply that is delivered back to them by the server option is sinflur attack now in sinflur attack what happen is we have a system a okay it is a attacker system and this is basically my system b which is actually my target so what happen is a basically take a random ip suppose ip is 1.1.1.1 .1 let me use some other color so i basically use the ip which is called 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 .1. this ip is not even exist in the network but a is basically spoof this ip and send the sin request okay to b so it, it mean the source ip in that is 1.1.1 and the destination is basically 1.1.3 which is a ip of b now according to rule if the port is basically open he will reply back sin act to that particular system okay but meantime he will keep the mem keep the packet in his memory the sin packet what he receive he keep it in a memory here why because he has to wait for the acknowledgement of his sin if he doesn't get the acknowledgement he will wait for 70 seconds till 70 second he will keep the packet in a memory but here what happen attacker meantime spoof the multiple ips and send the request to b and at one point of time memory is basically filled with the fake sin request so in this attack attacker send the sin but he is not repl replying back to the ac acknowledging the sin which he receive or the ip that he spoof actually that is also not possible because the ip that he used as a ip to source the packet and all that which is not even exist and the b is sending to that ip which is not exist so when it is not exist they will not get a reply and that is how we overflow the memory with the multiple sin request so that is called as a sinful attack so somehow this this explanation with the question makes sense but second is basically called as a smurf attack now in the smurf attack what happen is we have a system a and we have a system b we have a 1000 system so a basically spoof b ip which is his target and send the request to this 1000 host okay in the 1000 host he mentioned source ip is basically b ip and destination is basically 1000 ip and these 1000 ip reply to the b so what happened the resource basically flood on the b it does not make with the question so that's why b at least remove ping of death we just sending a ping packet so that is also remove icmp flood we sending a icmp packet that is also remove so only close option with the question is basically a for alpha that's why the answer is sinful attack this might be a question in the exam sinful attack works on which layer it works on the layer 4 of the osi model because sin is a packet works on the tcp ip layer or transport layer let's move to the next question okay icmp packet is sent to the broadcast address of a network however return address of the packet has been modified to corresponding with one of the machine that are part of the network what type of attack we are addressing here so we already give the explanation the answer is basically smurf attack the same thing na no? icmp packet sent broadcast so we have a attacker here okay he basically his target is basically 1.1.1.1 so he spoof his ip and send the request 1000 request to 1000 host and this 1000 host reply back to the d so that is why we basically went with the answer b for beta smurf attack okay let's move to the next question okay next coffee shot which of the following is the least secure authentication method that sent credential in a clear text see we have a four option pap chap eap radius if you go by the network security concept we only have a three type of authentication protocols okay three type of authentication protocol according to ic square syllabus 
वन इज कॉल्ड एज अ पैप वन इज कॉल्ड एज अ चैप एंड वन इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज अ ई ए पी वैन इट कम टू रेडियस रेडियस बेसिकली हेल्प अस टू हैंडल मल्टी वेंडर ऑथेंटिकेशन रिक्वेस्ट दैट इट्स एल डजन डू ऑथेंटिकेशन इट कैरी द रिक्वेस्ट एंड पास द इन्फॉर्मेशन टू ए डी द गोल ऑफ द रेडियस इज टू रिसीव द मल्टी वेंडर रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम द मल्टीपल यूजर एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट इट ट्रांसलेट now coming back to the authentication type the first part is called as a pap now what is pap we have a system a we have a system b a suppose request for an access b ask for password so a basically got a login box like this so he enter the username he enter the password that information actually we send in the plain text so any attacker if he intercept from the first packet he can intercept the data that is something happen in the case of pap okay password authentication protocol and it is more static in nature now second is basically called as a chap in the chap what happen same thing we request for access b basically is ask for the password but this time it send the nonce value there's a value called as a nonce the user cannot see this value user can only see the pop up box called enter the username and password but behind this password box there is a nonce value so when you enter a password which is act like a key to encrypt this nonce and it basically send back the information to b b already have a key they apply the key to decrypt the nonce if it match if it if it basically the nonce value get decrypted with the same key it mean user type the right password so this is basically also called as a dynamic authentication now why we introduce that suppose we have a system a we have a system b and we have a system c and this is basically the server we have so when a request for access when b request for access when c request for access even they have a same password 1 2 3 1 2 three, 3 okay even they basically request for the same password 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 i want their output should be different that is why when they request he receive a nonce value when they request they receive a nonce value when they request they receive a nonce value so they encrypt the nonce and send back to server so that is basically called as a chap okay so by this way even we having a same password our output will be different value now coming back to the eap now eap is basically used in a multi vendor environment now example like uh pap and chap is primarily used in the peer to peer authentication but eap is used in a multi vendor environment how suppose this is my access point this is my access point while access point so we have a user 1 and we have a user 2 okay so for what happen user can request to ap ap basically ask for the username and password he provide the credential that is how it works but now what happen even we have a user 2 he requesting and this basically ask for the password so this is more decentralized in nature because this ap is handle his authentication this ap is handle his authentication so we have integrated them with the radius <clears throat> and then radius connected with the ad so now what happen when user request for access it fires the information to ap ap basically ask for the credential he provide the credential to him ap itself will not do the validation he pass the information to radius and this is basically where the eap carry this request eap work on the layer 2 pass the information to interface to interface and from radius it pass the information to ad because as a radius he receive the request from the multi vendor we have access point we have access point we have vpn we have a dial up so we are receiving a request from the multi vendor requirement so radius will translate into the common request and pass the information to ad ad will verify authorized radius and radius will authorize the ap or associate vpn server for the authentication so eap is more scalable so eap basically have a multiple version one is called as a peep one is called as a leap one is called as a eap tls so if you take example of a leap in leap we exchanging a password in a eap tls client having a certificate server having a certificate so client will provide his certificate server will provide his certificate so by this way certificate to certificate they do the match but in the case of peep peep is basically is a open source in that case they don't want sorry close source you don't want the client to maintain a certificate because one of the primary concern with eap tls is that client and server both need to maintain the certificate which is basically a challenging task okay 
and finally we have a radius which basically handle the multi vendor requests alternate of a radius which is more secure is tecas plus or texas plus okay but question talking about which of the following is the least secure authentication method there is a one dedicated video i made on authentication protocol specific to cissp but that video also very useful for you okay in the description box i can share so question talking about least secure so pap is a least secure after that chap and then eap okay so i'm going with the answer a for alpha let's move to the next question so which of the following matrix used by a chap by which they defeat the man in the middle which is occur in pap option a nonce value exactly they're not exchanging a token so that is removed there's nothing called as a ticket encrypted password even we send we can able to intercept and we can find the pattern what in the chap we are extending is basically called as a nonce value that's why the answer is a for alpha because encryption you can apply in the pap also but what i want even we have a system a system b system c all three having a same password but what i want i want their different output to be sent over the network that's why the answer is a for alpha okay let's move to the next question The device operating at layer three of the OSI model uses which of the following protocol to determine the path to a different network? Now two keywords are there. One is called as a layer three of the OSI. Second is uses a protocol to determine the path, which is route between the different network. See TCP is never used for routing, so A remove and it work on transport layer. SIP is used for the VoIP, it work on the application or session layer. HTTP is work on the application layer, so only close. option is basically rip okay routing information protocol or route information protocol rip protocol is the one which is basically used for the routing communication so correct full form is routing information protocol it is a protocol which is a routing protocol by which we can able to communicate between the different route that's why the answer is c for charlie let's move to the next question thank you according to the osi model which layer handle data transfer between applications flow control also and error detection and correction see application layer send the information if i take it from a source point of view data link is basically also help us with error detection but not with the flow control and data link layer pass the information to physical layer so that is gone network layer is basically having a connectionless protocol so it never offer flow control the only option is basically transport layer how so this is my transport layer of the source and this is the transport layer of the destination when the data received by transport layer from above layer they divide data into fragment and in a fragment sorry in a segment not fragment segment segmentation happen in the transport layer and each segment data move to the destination transport layer and destination transport layer use a sequence number by which they arrange the data after sending a three data or four data they take a acknowledgement from the destination transport layer if they receive the acknowledgement it mean they will send the new data so this is how they maintain the flow control with the help of sequence number they can able to arrange the data so they provide the error detection and correction so flow control with error detection corrections can be done on the transport layer that's why the answer is basically transport layer of the osi model okay So this is all from my side team if you find this video useful do share in network i'm also planning to launch the second part of the domain 4 and do let me know shall i make the video on domain 5 of cc exam thank you goodbye